Behind me stands a European beech tree, just one of the more than 50 different species of trees we have over the 92 acres that comprise Neela Park. I'm excited to be talking to my old friend and tree expert, Colby Sattler, about the different types of species we have here on campus and learn a little bit more about their history. Let's go take a walk and see what he's up to. Hey Colby, I knew I would find you over here in front of this iconic tree in front of buildings 331 and 309. We call this our upside down tree. Uh, please help correct us and figure out what kind of species of tree this is and a little bit more about it. The upside down tree, this is a wonderful specimen. This is a European weeping beech. Having kind of crawled underneath, given it a quick inspection, I can tell it's weathered a few storms, but we can also see that it's put on some great new growth. So given its age and its condition, we couldn't really be happier with the state it's currently in. In fact, I'd venture to say if this was part of an Arboretum's collection, it would be a true focal point. So just, just a true gem here. We've taken a few steps away and we have arrived in front of this tree, um, which isn't as big as some of the more majestic trees we have here within the park, but is unique and special in its own way. So can you talk about that a little bit? Unique's the key word. So this is a native river birch. When we first came upon it, I actually struggled to properly ID it because I've actually never seen one this size. But then we get to that telltale, multicolored exfoliating bark, which really gives it away. Uh, just a wonderful specimen on campus here. We've got a handful of them. Uh, truly just a splendid tree. We're still in the same location. We've taken just a few steps away from the last tree where we learned that you can't necessarily judge the age of a tree by its size. So could you tell us a little bit about what this tree is um, and how old it might be? Sure, great question. So what we have here are Coosa dogwood. And although much smaller than the river birch we just looked at, planted at roughly the same time. So it's clearly part of a purposeful planting, but we can tell from species to species the different types of growth characteristics. So it's kind of a unique juxtaposition. And for the work that's been done on it uh, and the different characteristics we see about this tree, we know that it's been through some battles as well but they're still here, still doing all right. And in spring, when these get their beautiful white flowers, it's truly a treasure. Awesome. Before we head over to another part of the park where we have some of our largest trees, can you talk a little bit about the benefits that trees provide us as humans and the environment as well? It's a really critically important question, especially in Northeast Ohio, where we've seen our tree canopy uh, countywide really start to fall. And that has a lot of negative impacts on our ecosystem, on us as humans. We know that when we have a robust tree canopy and our cities and communities are lined with trees, our health benefits, the benefits to the community grow and expand. Uh, and that's something we want to ensure going forward. So when we have a beautiful tree lined campus here, what we know is the ability for people to take a walk or see the trees out their office window can help lower their blood pressure, can help calm them, makes them more productive. So when we think about that on a corporate campus, when we think about that on a school campus, those tangible benefits it provides people, we really need to start focusing on those important characteristics and qualities of trees. Even for folks in a hospital stay, their access to trees and green space can help shorten that stay and improve their uh, recovery time. Uh, everything from improved uh, crime and safety statistics to those really critically important health and wellness benefits that trees provide. It's newer science, but we're starting to have a better understanding of it. So Neela Park truly is a shining example of how things could and should be when it comes to tree canopy. Colby, we're in the Neela Camp section within Neela Park. Uh, this is a virtual arboretum of trees back here. Uh, this particular one is very interesting because it's got a unique aesthetic to it. What kind of tree is this? And how old do you think it might be? Great question. You've got a ton of huge trees back here. Your collection of oaks uh, is amazing. Um, 
So you've got gigantic pin oaks, red oaks, black oaks, white oaks, chinka pin oaks. So you really run the gamut, really emblematic of uh, the great forest ecosystem of this region. And something this large, I'd say we're easily over 200 years old. And I, I mentioned the aesthetic because it's got this really cool twisting kind of effect going on here with these tremendously large branches. And it just seems to be flourishing. Why is it that the trees back here uh, seem to flourish more than some of the trees on the outskirts of, of campus where they're, they're bunched together? Yeah, great insight. So a variety of factors. So these trees kind of growing out in this field, there's less competition for resources, for light, for water, nice soils. So it really has a chance to uh, grow really wide as well as tall versus some of those on the outskirts or in a more forested area. When you see this twisting effect, you know, a variety of things could be uh, implementing that effect, but we're also right at the top of a really large plateau. So we've got a lot of wind pushing its way up here. So over time, that twisting and turning and pushing that force of the wind has really created this unique look of this tree. So besides just being big, it's just really cool to look at. Colby, we're still here in Neela Camp. Uh, and the last time we walked the park, you knew right away as we were walking up to this tree that it was something special. The first thing I noticed was that it was absolutely majestic and giant tree. But you're able to share some more information with us that will show that this is a, an absolute true gem that we have here on campus. That's right, Ben. And so the first thing we noticed, there used to be a plaque on this tree and the grounds folks here actually saved it. So what we know for sure now is that this was and is a Moses Cleveland tree. So known to be in existence at the founding of Cleveland in 1796. And I venture to say something this large was thriving at that point in time as well. But just a crown jewel of the trees here on campus uh, and really without compare regionally. So just an amazing oak, a great place to kind of bring this toward a conclusion. But digging a little deeper, we know there's a lot that isn't known about this tree. Roughly 150 were uh, cataloged throughout the region and really not many are still in existence. So we're gonna do a little more research. We're gonna find out everything we can about this, take some measurements and get some information back over to you folks so you can really begin to celebrate this crown jewel. Thank you so much, Colby. I, I, I have gotten excited about trees as we've gone through the park and have talked about them. I can't wait to see what you uncover about this tree and then be able to share it with the rest of the organization. Thanks, Colby, for coming out and talking trees. It's been absolutely fascinating. And thank you, Ben, and the opportunity to be here at Neela Park talking trees. Uh, what a treat. It's my pleasure. So excited to be back here with you soon.